Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Easter morning, this strange and unusual Easter morning, a morning when we're used to gathering together in the sanctuary, but instead are socially distanced from one another as we are in our cars. I have a question for you. What are you looking for? Or better yet, where are you looking? To help us as we answer those questions this morning, we turn now to the gospel that the vicar read just a few moments ago, Matthew chapter 28, reminding you of verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. This is the word of the Lord. How often have you looked for something? I mean, really, really searched for something and yet couldn't find it. That's something that happened to me and my siblings again and again when we were growing up. You see, my dad was forever losing his glasses. And when he did, life stopped. Whatever we were doing, we came into the house, we searched high and low, downstairs in the basement, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the garage, wherever we could think of. And oftentimes, no matter how hard we looked, we couldn't find his glasses. You see, the reason was his glasses weren't at home. He had left them in his office. We were looking for something he needed, but we were looking in the wrong place. So it was with Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, and the women as they went to the tomb that first Easter. They were looking for Jesus. They thought they knew where to look, just like we thought we knew where to look for my dad's glasses. But the reality, they were looking in the wrong place. They were going out to the tomb. They were looking for a dead teacher, the body of Jesus. And when they got there, they didn't find Jesus. No, they found the two angels who asked them the question, why do you look for the living among the dead? So this morning, wherever you might be, those who've been watching us on maybe their TV, their tablet, or their phone, or for those of you who are here in the parking lot, are you looking in the right place? What are you looking for today? And maybe why are you looking? It's Easter morning. Why are you looking? Now, as we look at that, there are several different kinds of people out there looking for things on this Easter. The first group, I would term the doubters. They're the ones who are looking for some kind of Jesus. They're not really looking to find Jesus, to believe in him, to have the hope of life everlasting. No, they're looking for a reason to doubt Jesus. They're hoping that somehow there's going to find a tomb in the Middle East somewhere, they're going to identify the body that absolutely this is Jesus, that he didn't raise from the dead, and that all that Easter talk, that resurrection talk, well, it doesn't amount to anything. So for them, Easter is all about the Easter bunny and chocolate and disproving that Christian myth that Jesus rose from the dead. Now another one of those groups are out there. The, the word I like to describe them is they're memorialists. Now, I will admit that memorials are important. If you would go to Washington, D.C., you perhaps could see the Vietnam Memorial Wall, and it's important. It reminds us what happened back in the 60s, all the lives that were lost in the war in Vietnam. Or maybe the World War II Memorial, when we are reminded of the greatest generation. Or here in North Dakota, we could go up on the Capitol grounds and see the memorial that we go to every year on November 11th and all those who gave their life for freedom here in these United States. Vicar was getting cold, so he had to move that. <laughs> but for some, the memorial is not a World War II memorial or the memorial for those who gave their life and freedom. No, you see the building before you 
Zion is their memorial. You see, they come on Easter or at Christmas because they are reminded of something they did with their grandparents or their parents. And it's not about faith. They're not looking for the risen Jesus. Instead, they're looking for a memory. And indeed, today, it's much more than that, is it not? Then there's those who are the show-offs. And I'm going to admit that I miss the days when my two little daughters were getting up in their all-Easter dresses and maybe their Easter hats. For some, Easter is all about showing off their new clothes, all about showing off and finding all those things. But no, it's much more important than that. Indeed, there's the transformed. That's what brings you hopefully here today on this brisk, sunny Easter morning. Because as we turn to the gospel lesson, we saw how that Easter event transformed the women and the disciples so long ago. They knew that Jesus was not just some great teacher or miracle worker, that indeed he was the very son of God. Indeed, a few months ago, we celebrated God in the flesh on Christmas. You see, now with the Christmas reality of the Jesus in the flesh among us, would ultimately come to the cross and the empty tomb. Today, we are looking for the empty tomb, knowing that we have a living Savior. The trials and troubles and tribulation that we find ourselves, the social distancing, not being able to come publicly together face to face, yet we know no matter where we are, whether we're at home, whether in our car, wherever we might be, Jesus says, I will be with you always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Thomas was preparing his disciples when the time would come when he would no longer physically be there with them. They were worried. They were wondering what's going to happen. Jesus turned to his disciples and say, said, you will be with me. And Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. Jesus' answer is as important for us today when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is that reality that amidst the struggles and uncertainty of the pandemic that brings us together to Easter, that as we sit in our cars together in faith, we can celebrate the reality that we have a risen Lord who will never leave us no matter what the trials or what the trouble, and we can celebrate his amazing, undeserved grace for each and every one of us. And we will rejoice again when we can come together and worship, but until the day when we can be in the sanctuary together, we can rejoice that no matter where we are, that when we come and give praise, our Lord and Savior is right there with us to sustain us and to hold us up that no matter what the devil in the world is going to throw at us, no matter what virus or pandemic is out there, he says he is alive. He is risen, as he said, and because he is risen, we know that our names have been written on the book of life, and that today we come together looking to celebrate the Easter event, the empty tomb. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.